one of the bearers soliloquizes. Room in your heart for him, O Mother Earth, who loved each flower and leaf that made you fair, and sang your praises in verses manifold and delicate, with here and there a line from end to end in blossom like a bough the May breathes on, so rich it was. Some thought the workmanship more costly than the thing molded or carved, as in those ornaments found at Mike Knee. And yet nature's self works in this wise, upon a blade of grass, or what small note she lends the woodland thrush, lavishing endless patience. He was born artist, not artisan, which some few saw and many dream not. As he wrote no odes when Croesus wedded or M. Sainos died, and gave no breath to civic feasts and shows, he missed the glare that gilds more facile men a twilight poet, groping quite alone, belated in a sphere where every nest is emptied of its music and its wings. Not great his gift, yet we can poorly spare even his slight perfection in an age of limping trilets and tame rondeau. He had at least ideals, though unreached, and heard, far off, immortal harmonies, such as fall coldly on our ear today. The mighty's elastic movement now engrosses us a miasmatic breath blown from the slums. We paint life as it is, the hideous side of it with careful pains, making a god of the dull commonplace. For have we not the old gods overthrown and set up strangest idols? We would clip imagination's wing and kill delight, our sole art being to leave nothing out that renders art offensive. Not for us Madonnas leaning from their starry thrones ineffable, nor any heaven-wrought dream of sculptor or of poet, we prefer such nightmare visions as in morbid brains take shape and substance thoughts that taint the air and make all life unlovely. Will it last? Beauty alone endures from age to age, from age to age endures, handmade of God. Poets who walk with her on earth go hence bearing a talisman. You bury one, with his hushed music, in some potter's field, the snows and rains blot out his very name, as he from life seems blotted, through time's glass slip the invisible and magic sands that mark the century. Then falls a day the world is suddenly conscious of a flower, imperishable, ever to be prized, sprung from the mold of a forgotten grave. T is said the seeds wrapped up among the bombs and hieroglyphics of Egyptian kings old strange vitality, and, planted, grow after the lapse of thrice a thousand years. Some day, perchance, some unregarded note of our poor friend hears some sweet minor chord that failed to lure our more accustomed ear away which the fancy of an unborn age. Who knows, since seeds have such tenacity. Meanwhile he's dead, with scantiest laurel one and little of our nineteenth century gold. So, take him, earth, and this his mortal part, with that shrewd alchemy thou hast, transmute to flower and leaf in thine unending springs.